Let's do this. I'm going to set everything up and then I'm going to talk about why everything is set up the way it is. So, hello. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Hi, Frost Fatales. Uh, no, it's Flame Fatales. Hi, Games Committee. <laughs> I'm Blackheart Wings, and this is going to be my submission for uh, Flame Fatales 2022 live from stream. <laughs> I'm just setting up my run right now. Uh, so there are like really specific settings that we need to do as I set up the run. Um, as you can see here, I'm setting up my multiplayer options. We want three starting cabins and we need the cabin layout to be separate because it allows uh, for closer access to the Cinder Sap Forest, which is the lower part of the um, of the farm, uh, which is really important for a super fun little skip that we do. And I also need to show that there is no random seed because this is not seeded. Uh, seeded marriage is very different. Uh, I use the forest farm for forageable items and I play as a lady Not just because we are uh, the fatales and we are the coolest women ever But um, because it's actually really important for the money routing uh, Your parents will send you letters in the mail. I need to change. Let's give her a red skirt or red, red pants Let's do that. Um, but your parents will send you letters in the mail um, and these letters will come in as you reach certain thresholds for, like, income. So when you make 5,000 gold, your parents will send you a letter in the mail, and, a, and they'll send you another letter at 15,000 gold. Your gender is the only thing that is, like, the, your gender affects only one thing, and that is the letters in the mail. Um, if you choose, like, if you decide to play as a, a man, uh, you will get cookies and 500 gold. But if you play as a woman, you get two rounds of 500 gold from your parents. So it's really important for the economy and for the money, the money routing. Um, I think that is it for setup. So I'm just going to pop in the information here. Uh, you guys have seen that I have not put in a seed. So my favorite thing is Shane. Shane, by the way, is our marriage candidate of cho choice. He is the fastest out of all of the marriageable candidates. So, all of that being said, here we go. Three, two, one, go. So the first thing we do is we move our bed and we pick up these, they're parsnips, they're not turnips. You can tell that I am a former Harvest Moon fan. Well, I'm still a Harvest Moon fan um, because I call them turnips and not parsnips. Um, so we plant all 15 of these. Oh, I got a coal really early on. That's super good. I need that later to um, craft the scarecrow so that our lovely little scarecrow friend will defend our crops. But I'm gonna plant these parsnips as quickly as I can. Beautiful. There we go. I'm only going to water two of them, however. Uh, this is pretty important because I only need two of them to gift later on to our dearest Shane. I'm going to be leaving on the 9th. Um, so I I'm just going to be sleeping straight through several days. Uh, it always rains on Wednesday the 3rd on the first year of every new file that you create. So I count on that rain day. Uh, I'm waiting for three, no, two extra rain days. I need three rain days total for the parsnips to be fully grown. So as of right now, I am leaving on the 9th because on the 11th, I need to leave my house and give some parsnips to Shane. Uh, it looks like I am still leaving on the 9th um, so I can water these parsnips and make sure that they are grown on time. Uh, yeah, all right. So <laughs> you'll notice as I'm watering and going about life on the farm that I'm doing things, I'm executing these things really quickly like I'm executing these actions super quickly. This is via animation canceling. Let's not miss that one there. <laughs> animation canceling is a hard coded um, tool in the game. It's leftover debug tool that concerned ape left in. Uh, and we speedrunners use it for glitchless. We use it for mainly glitchless. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just because, like, we think it's really awesome that you can move super fast. I'm picking that up just in case. Bit of a time loss, but that is important. Um, so yeah, animation canceling. 
very quick, very, very zoomy ways. This is the 11th. Uh, let's, let's get rid of some stuff in here. I can recuperate those things later. Beautiful. So yeah, animation canceling is leftover debug code that we use to execute any action faster. It It is, um, it's three specific keys. That is R, right shift, and delete. If you press those at the same time, you will cancel the animation in the middle, which means that I can chop down trees really quickly. I can water plants really quickly and uh, just all sorts of things. The time save varies from tool to tool uh, because every tool animation takes a different amount of time. Um, but yeah, I have it I have my animation canceling bound three, uh, one to one, which means that I have one button bound to right shift, one button bound to delete, and um, one button bound to R. There we go, we have gifted Shane for our very first day. Uh, but we recently, relatively recently, allowed a, ru a ruling so that you can bind all three of those keys to one key for the sake of accessibility. <clears throat> so that is animation canceling and, and that is how I do things super duper quickly. <laughs> I am going to be gifting Shane several items over the course of this run. We're starting out with the parsnips. Uh, later I will be gifting him a salmon berry and I will also be gifting him beer and hot peppers. Uh, all of these items are chosen very specifically because of the friendship points that they give. Um, this route, while definitely not like world record routing, is very consistent and it's also competitive. You can use this route if you want to, um, you know, go on the leaderboards. I think the fastest time with this route, gifting Shane twice early on in the, in the season, is like 40 minutes or so. I'm averaging it around an hour, but that's <laughs> totally fine. But yes, the friendship points. Uh, very specifically routed out. We gift, we gift Shane on the 11th and the 12th, which is what I just did. And we need to make sure that we talk to him because talking also gives friendship points. Um, <laughs> the friendship routing in this game is very, very carefully routed out, especially at the beginning. Uh, one of the first goals that we want to do while doing a marriage percent run is we want to get Shane to four hearts before the flower festival, which is on the 23rd of spring. Uh, by doing this, we take advantage of his loved gifts. Um, we give him some beers. Um, we also give him parsnips, which are universally liked gifts. Everybody seems to like uh, <laughs> stuff that you grow on your farm. And we're also going to give Tim a salmon berry today. Also a universally liked gift. I'm just going to pick this up. I also need to make sure that I get foraging level one, which I should get today. So I will chop away at these trees. There's actually a really interesting way to calculate how much, um, I'm going to get rid of this clay actually to calculate Oops. <laughs> Your foraging XP. If you chop down eight trees and four stumps, that will give you enough XP to get foraging level one. I've already lost count, but I'm, I'm doing a pretty solid job so far. So I'm sure that between all of this and picking up this lovely little salmon berry and the wild horse radish, which is also a forageable item, I'll get it. It'll be fine. It's no problem. So, hi Shane! Gotta remember to talk to him, and we're off again! Wood, gathering wood, uh, is a very important part of the speedrun. We don't want to shirk it, we don't want to fall behind. I did get foraging level one, fabulous, so I'm just gonna sleep until the 20th now. We need a grand total of 850 wood. 
We need 50 to craft a chest, which is what I'm going to do right now as I head into the 20th, which is one of, if not the most important day in the run leading up to the flower festival. Like I said, we're trying to get Shane all the way up to four hearts, which is what all of that gifting was about. <laughs> so he can dance with us at the flower festival and that will bring us up to five hearts total. By the way, we say no to the cat here, but it, it's always a great incentive to have either a bid war for the cat versus the dog. The cat is the faster option, but people love dogs. I'm going to pop all of this stuff in here. I need this. I also need this. Beautiful. Yes, okay. People love fighting over cats and dogs, so <laughs> it's a great bid war incentive. Um, today, what I'm doing, today is one of the biggest days in the run. I need to gather up forageable items to make sure that I can get about 1,600 gold so I can buy some beer for Shane. Beer is Shane's, one of Shane's most loved items. He adores beer very, very much. And it's not raining today. I'm really glad that it's not raining today. Uh, that would have changed the route significantly. Um, but it's fine. It's definitely not too much of a time loss either. Let's see, what have we got going on here? I wanna get at least one of each of these uh, forgeable items available here. Optimally, I will get three of each. Uh, if not, then we will make it work. There's a horseradish up here. Wonderful. I'm gonna get rid of these stones. So I need at least one of, but hopefully three, of a horseradish, dandelion, a leek, and some daffodils. Daffodils don't show up until you walk into town, which is where I'm headed right now. Um, the reason I needed foraging level one is so I can, uh, craft seed packets for spring seeds. Uh, they sell for significantly more money than just selling these items individually. If I make three, it will give me just enough money to buy four beers for Shane, which will hold us over until we get to the summer. Let's see. I have... Three, what am I missing? I only have one dandelion, but I can sell them individually, which is fine. No daffodils. Okay. Interesting. I can check the- oh, there we go. Here's one. Eh, I'll get rid of these. It's fine. Oop. That's one, which means I can craft at least one. I'm gonna check the bus stop really quickly and see what's going on over there. I uh, don't need to um, sell all of these until about midday. Midday is like the hard line because that is when the the saloon opens and that's the shop that sells the beer. Fabulous, okay. Oops. That's the shop that sells the beer. Um, so I have until midday to gather up all of the things that I need. Because Shane does not make an appearance until a little afternoon. His birthday, uh, his his um, schedule on Saturdays, not just his birthday, but on weekends in general, varies wildly from from his weekly, his midweek schedule. So we take advantage, especially because his birthday ends up on a weekend. It's very handy. I'm also chopping down these trees, both because I need wood and because I need to bring my energy levels down. It is faster to knock yourself out after gifting Shane uh, <laughs> than it is to run home and bring, tuck yourself into bed. So that is what I will be doing. So I'm working to bring my energy levels down. That's two. All right. That is, that's enough. We can, we can make do with that and all of my other forageable items here. Let's see, I will sell these, one of these. I need 1,600. I should not have sold those. <laughs> I'll buy them back. I will, however, sell this. Beautiful, just enough. I also need sap, sap will become relevant. <laughs> 
There's a reason why I'm not selling this app. It will become relevant in uh in the summer. But for now, I just need to wait until noon for <laughs> the saloon to, to open up. So while I do that, I'm going to be bringing my energy down and this would be a great spot for donations, a great spot to take questions, and we can just hang out for a minute. It'll be great. I can bring my energy down to zero without there being very bad repercussions. Oh no. I overdid it. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> so when you exhaust yourself out like this, you move very slowly, which is not great for <laughs> For a speed run, but it's fine. We're making it work regardless. I'm just gonna wait for Gus to come down. Normally, I would walk up and meet him in the middle. Um, because if you stop an NPC in their tracks, they will rush past you. Come on, there we go. I will purchase all of this beer, and off we go to meet Shane. <laughs> Very slowly. <laughs> this is fine. It just means that I can pass out faster. <laughs> Uh, because today is his birthday, it gives um, it gives us a multiplier bonus for any gifts that we will give him. Here you go, Shane. He acknowledges that it's his birthday and then asks us why we're bothering him. So that is how it goes, I suppose. <laughs> we get an eight times multiplier uh, multiplier bonus for gifting him things on his birthday, and a loved gift is eighty points. So we get, we get, oh, I was supposed to split there. <laughs> we're, we're doing great. <laughs> so we get a whole bunch of hearts. I should actually probably talk about the heart system as I await. So there are, the, the friendship works on a heart system. Every heart is worth 250 uh, friendship points. And we, the goal is to bring Shane up to five, ten hearts total. By uh, getting him up to four hearts, which I will do just as soon as I give him another beer, I will be able to dance with him at the flower festival, which will bring us up to five. And that is halfway already as we enter the spring. We need a total of 2,500 friendship points to like fully bring him, uh, to be able to marry him. We need a whole bunch of, <laughs> we need a whole bunch of points. Um, but the friendship routing is very, very carefully crafted. It's very meticulously done. So I will run down, wait for Shane to walk out. He walks out between 7.10 and 7.20. There he is, right on schedule. This, his schedule, by the way, is what makes him the fastest, the absolute fastest marriage candidate. It's, uh, he leaves his house super duper early during the week, uh, which gives us really easy access to him. And which is also why we got those separated cabins. The southernmost cabin will bring us down real, real quick. Okay. It is the 24th, which means that it is the spring festival. I need to run down to Cinder Sap Forest, which is this area right here before 610. The uh, flower, the flower dance is held in this area. So at 6:10 a.m., the area will lock out. It will lock me out, and I will not be able to enter. But because I entered before 6:10 a.m., I can hang out down here. I can chop down some trees, and I can sneakily, happily, gift Shane one last beer before the summer, which will bring us up to the threshold that we need uh, as far as friendship points go. gonna run over here, wait for him to come out and say hi. There we go. Hello, sir! Oh my goodness. Talking will give 20 friendship points, which is really important. You always need to remember to talk to him because otherwise the friendship points will go absolutely haywire. And you will get locked out of uh, 
dancing with him at the festival. We don't want that. So I take very great care in remembering to talk with him. I'm going to take this time now because the, the uh, flower festival starts at 9 a.m. I've got a little bit of time, so I'm going to be clearing out this area here so I can plant seeds in the summer. I mentioned hot peppers. Hot peppers is another one of Shane's most loved gifts. I'm going to grab this, this, this. Um, so we basically plant and harvest a whole bunch, a whole bunch of those peppers, both for money and to have as gifts, just to have ready as gifts. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very, very carefully routed out. It's one of the things that I love most about Marriage Percent is that it's, we use the mechanics and we like bring them to the brink especially in glitchless because glitch marriage percent is something else entirely all right it's flower dance time we're gonna go and talk to shane i love the little plucky banjo that plays during <laughs> during these cutscenes. it's great so i'm gonna go talk to shane excellent sauce yes spicy can we please dance Heck yes, we got this achievement, which means that we have reached five friendship points. And we're gonna start this dance. The Flower Festival is an unskippable cutscene, but I'm just gonna don my little flower crown in honor of the day. <laughs> and we're gonna do a little dance because I can't skip this cutscene. So this is again, a really great spot for donations. <laughs> And take a sip of water as well. All right. That was fun. Time to go home. It's a good thing it dropped me here because I need to pick these up. Fabulous. And we go to sleep. I harvested all of those for foraging level, <laughs> farming level one, which allows me to craft a scarecrow. We'll talk about that once we hit summer, but for now I'm just going to sleep straight through to the, begin the beginning of summer. Fabulous. Okay. Summer is what I like to call the frantic farming section of Marriage Percent. <laughs> we have to do a whole lot of farming. A heck of a lot of farming. It's, it's great. I'm gonna take a moment here and count out. Three, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, that will be 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 35, I'm going to stop at 35 and I'm going to go and give Shane his last gift of beer, 35, I need to remember that. My goal is to have about 40 slots for 40 peppers because that is that is what we are doing. We are going to be <laughs> planting a whole lot of peppers. We want to do somewhere between 35 and 40. So this is 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. I'm going to get rid of this spot here. All right. I'm gonna plant these mixed seeds and hope to get other seeds that are shaped like this. Those are hot pepper plants. I only got one, which is fine. Also gonna plant, I need, what am I missing? 
the fiber. I'm also gonna craft that scarecrow. The scarecrow is a fundamental aspect of this run. He protects all of our crops. I'm gonna pop these, actually, I'm just gonna grab this here. He protects our crops from crows, obviously. The crows are little menaces who love to harass us. And they try and steal your crops. They will destroy your crops. Um, the crows will only spawn if you have more than 15 crops out on your farm. I'm, I went down and I met Shane. Good, 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 good. So if I have 16 or more crops, that is when you start to play with fire as far as the crows go. That is what, uh, so, so yeah, we, we really need, <laughs> we really need that scarecrow. All right, I'm gonna run into Pierre's. I'm gonna sell all of these things in my inventory and try and get as close to 30, 17. I'll get a little bit more money from here. 22, this is 23. Mm, cutting it close. All right, let me see what I can do here. I want to get as close to 30 as possible. Um, if it's not possible, then, you know, we'll, we'll make do with what we've got. I'm going to wander around. Let's see what I can pick up. <laughs> I know that there were some- yes, there is a grape here that I can sell. I've got 22. I can sell items to Pierre, which is incredibly helpful, like these forgeable items. The journal also has a few quests that you can pick up at any point during the run after you've harvested and sold turnip- to not turnips- parsips! <laughs> um... So yes, I'm going to try and get as, as close to 30 seeds as possible, which is why we do the mixed seeds. 26, 27. Let's see if I can find one more thing. Did I check these trash cans already? I did. Routing on the fly. Let me see. Let's check up here by the community center. There might be a couple, a grape or two. Aha! Sweet pea! That's the handy thing about Pierre, is that you can sell these forageable items for a good price immediately, so that way we don't have to wait to put things into the shipping bin, wait overnight. Um, that takes up way too much time. So instead, I can just run around, try and grab as many things as possible, and work my magic from there. It looks like I will definitely have at least 30, which is good. It's not great, but it does the job. There we go, exactly 30. <laughs> Fabulous. I'm going to make my way right back down. Right back down <laughs> to the, um, to the farm, the lower part of the farm and plant all of these peppers. I don't have fertilizer though, because I sold all my sap. <laughs> Let me see what I can do. Do I have any sap here? Mm, no, okay. Let me move this guy over here so he can better protect my crops. Let me chop down a couple of trees. Get at least a little bit of fertilizer. The fertilizer is important because it um, it doubles the fact. It doubles the uh, the ability to get extra 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 peppers. <laughs> Okay, we've got a little bit of sap here. There's always a chance to get like an extra little pepper on crops that are like re... That regenerate. So if you can get multiple harvests, I'm supposed to water those guys. Oh dear. I am all in disarray. 
We have 31, 31 peppers. Also, thank you, Upper Casserole. I'm recording commentary right now. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It was very recent. Um, but yeah, we gotta water these guys. Off we go. <laughs> so. This is the frantic farming section of the... <laughs> Thankfully, I got like a few little points of fertilizer, which is always good. When when there are crops that have like the capacity for multiple harvests, oh dear, I missed that one. It's fine. We'll make it work. <laughs> There's always an extra chance that they might spawn two, uh, two crops instead of one. The fertilizer helps with that. That is the earthquake. The earthquake happens every summer third. It's, ooh, very normal. We love an early rain day. <laughs> Usually around now is when I will ask my chat to spam uh, a rain emote, any rain emote they have, because this part of the run relies heavily, 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 heavily on rain RNG, especially in the summer. And there they go. There goes my chat right now. <laughs> The way that the weather works in Stardew Valley is that there's always a chance of rain, but that chance varies upon seasons. Uh, in the spring and the summer, in the spring and the fall rather, there is an 18.4 chance of it raining every single day, regardless of the day. In the summer, however, it starts out at roughly 13%, and every day it increases uh, incrementally. So it, it'll start out at 13, and then the next day it will be 13.5, and it will go on and on and on until it hits about 30% in the late uh, summer. Great mechanic, not very helpful for speed runs. <laughs> so we do what we can while we can. I have a spreadsheet right in front of me that helps me figure out um, how many times I need to water depending on how many peppers I have because I need to have a specific amount of peppers. Did I get, I have, I got one. We got, we got one gold pepper. I was hoping for more, but. <laughs> That is the RNG of this run. Summer is fascinating because we hope for gold peppers and we hope for rain. It's really important that we get gold peppers because those are the those are the peppers that we give to Shane uh, when we go out and say hi to him uh, throughout the summer. Like I said, Shane loves hot peppers. I am actually just going to leave that guy there and hopefully he will. I'll just harvest him with the rest. And he will be all cut up with everybody else. I'm not going to miss another one. <laughs> but yeah, we hope for rain and we hope for golden peppers. I have a spreadsheet in front of me that will help me figure out exactly when I should water so I can get the optimal amount of harvest per pepper, depending on how many uh, peppers I plant. It ranges from 30 to 45. Let's see, Monday the 8th. This is a gifting day. It is sunny, which is helpful for gifting days. Uh, I want to gift Shane twice a week. Uh, one of the friendship mechanics in Stardew Valley is that you can only gift NPCs a, a gift twice a week. That is the maximum. That It's kind of like a preventative measure, so that way you can't like spam them with gifts within the first season and all of a sudden you can get married. Great mechanic, not very helpful for, for speed running. So today is the first of two gift days over the course of the week. I'm going to be gifting him that one solitary Gold, a gold quality pepper because the gold quality peppers give more friendship even though he loves hot peppers on principle 
the uh, quality of the pepper gives an extra boost to friendship points. Uh, which is what we want. Here you go, Shane. Yes, I, I just had a hunch that it was your favorite. It was just, just a lucky guess. <laughs> Just a lucky guess. That is the, um, that is the bulk of the summer. It's lots of watering. Sometimes we run out and say hi to Shane. And a lot of desperately hoping for rain. <laughs> Here we go. We've got the next harvest day. I am going to get rid of this and this. I'm going to clear out this inventory a little bit. Fabulous. Hooray, we have more, more golden quality. <laughs> I was getting a little worried there. So every morning I walk out, I water my plants, we gift some we gift some of them to Shane. This is this is prime donation territory. This is where we go all out with the donation reading if there's any that come in. I'm also gonna take a quick chance to maybe get a couple of pieces of wood. Not right now, but I also have to keep an eye on the time. <laughs> There he goes. Hi, Shane. All right. So yeah, the chances of rain. Real, the, it's a humdinger. It's a real humdinger. <laughs> right, it is the 10th. Tenth is just a watering day. I will also try and take advantage as I am going about watering to chop down trees. It's such a vital part of the run alongside like generating the necessary amount of money. Water this guy here. So today I'm just gonna chop down one of these trees here. If I get pine cones or other kinds of seeds, I will replant them. closer so that way when they grow up I have more wood it's we think about it we think about it here <laughs> during stardew speedruns these are just the little strats that we come up with oh dear all right there we go fabulous I am again animation canceling as often as I can so I can water quickly and go to sleep quickly we want rain days because we don't have to go out and do all of this watering every single day. That is optimal for us. Sometimes we're not so lucky though. All right. Tomorrow should be a harvest day. Another thing that I need to take, take care of keep an eye on, bear in mind, is the decay. Alongside the gifting and the, um, the talking mechanics, again, talking gives you 20 friendship points. Um, every time you talk to them, there is this funky little mechanic called decay. If you have not met a specific threshold, meaning if you're not at eight hearts with a regular uh, rather, eight hearts with a bachelor or bachelorette, um, one of the marriage candidates, and if you're not at ten hearts with the, um, the regular villagers, your friendship, uh, your friendship points will go down. Two points a day for every day that you do not speak to them. It's supposed to encourage you to, uh, be social and to go out and to speak with all of the NPCs, but this is a speed run. We do not have time for that. I'm, I was just supposed to water today. It's fine. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so that is another mechanic that we have to keep in mind. It rains on the 13th. There are two rain days throughout the entirety of the summer where it will always rain. One of those days is the 13th. The second one is on the 26th. Gosh darn it, not again. <laughs> I'm restarting my day because every single one of those peppers is important. Uh, so if I make a silly mistake, like accidentally destroying one of my peppers, I can just restart the day and it's not that big of a time loss. It's fine. Um, if I had more peppers, I would have just eaten the time loss, but no, I only have 30 of these guys. <laughs> I only have 30 of these guys, so everyone counts. <laughs> this has happened every single one of my practice runs. I have accidentally destroyed one of my peppers. It's not great, <laughs> but it happens. <clears throat> All right, today's a harvest day. I'm also gifting today. So let's see, what did I get? Am I a lucky winner of another, another handful of gold quality peppers? <sighs> That's all right. Quantity makes up for quality in this case. Got a water fast. All right, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a time loss here and I'm going to uh, clear out my inventory and grab some wood from my inventory. So that way I am more up to date as to how much wood I need left, how much, how much wood I need, how much there is left for me to get. Um, like I said, I need a total of 850. Right now it's actually 750 because I did use the previous 100 to create the, um, the chest and the scarecrow. Hi Shane! It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I love accidentally gifting him things that I am not supposed to do. Oh goodness gracious, we're doing great! But honestly, that's the beauty of speedrunning Stardew Valley. Hi, Lisha. <laughs> I'm, I'm recording commentary right now. That's the beauty of Stardew Valley, honestly, is that it's really forgiving when you make silly mistakes, like accidentally gifting Shane the wrong item. He really said, I don't like this, and I realized my mistake. <laughs> Optimally, this will not happen when I am speedrunning, but <laughs> of course, when you record, that's when everything goes wrong. It's fine. We're doing fine. <laughs> I'm once again going to grab all of that wood from my inventory because I need it to keep track of how much I need and how much I have left. I'll just rearrange all of this and hold it. <laughs> We're doing great. It's going to be great. <laughs> we take these mistakes in stride. It's very forgiving. This game is very forgiving because it saves at the at the end slash the beginning of every day. <laughs> so little mistakes like that are only a minor time loss in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> All right, let's see what is up next. We can finally get out of out of the fifteenth. <laughs> we have finally ended the 15th of summer uh, <laughs> on the 16th oh okay uh, normally I would be gifting watering and gifting on the 16th however we don't want to gift on rainy days because it's just eating a time loss so I will just go to sleep uh, save that little bit of time and gift on another day. That other day being today, I can gift today on Wednesday because it is the middle of the week. And Shane's schedule stays relatively the same. Uh, the, uh, the only days that I don't want to gift um, 
on a sunny day is the weekends because his his schedule changes over the weekends he leaves his house much later than usual uh, so we want to gift during the week as often as possible here. I'm also going to finish chopping down this stump so another tree can grow in its place. <laughs> We're going! We're making it work! Alright, the 18th is a harvest day, which means that I will get more peppers! Economy in this game is incredibly important. We need... Oh! Okay. It's... Okay. It's raining! <laughs> It's raining, so I will just run out. I will harvest all of these peppers and not water them. Um, and run back inside and sleep. I didn't wait for another sunny day. I'm not waiting for another sunny day just so I can stay on schedule. Uh, I need a very specific number of harvests. Uh, depending on, again, how many... How many peppers we plant. It varies. I'm actually supposed to sleep today, but I will just sleep tomorrow instead. Because I've already started and I checked my spreadsheet a little too late. <laughs> We're doing great. We're doing marvelously. It is the 19th, so I will sleep on the 20th. And we'll pop out on the 21st. <laughs> it's fine we are doing fine what was I saying I was talking about the money routing so part of the reason why uh, alongside the fact that Shane loves these peppers so much is uh, we need a solid very solid amount of money um, in order to finish this run we need a total of um, 15,200 gold. I'm gonna chop down this tree actually while I'm at it. Um, 15,200 gold total. That is the minimum that we need, not uh, counting the money that we need for any of the peppers. That is the amount of money we need at the end of the run. 22nd is a harvest gift day. We need 200 gold to buy the bouquet. Um, when you reach eight hearts with a marriage candidate, you can gift them a bouquet and that will be like formally requesting that you date. So you're, uh, you're locked into the romance with that, with that, uh, character specifically. Uh, which is important because you can't propose without having previously gifted the bouquet. It's, it's very important. So that you need 200 for that. We also need 5,000 gold to purchase the marriage pendant from the old mariner. The marriage pendant is the proposal item in this game. I'll talk more about that when we get there, but we need 5,000 gold for that. We also need a total of 10,000 gold in order to upgrade our home. It is, one, again, one of the prerequisites for marriage. You need to have an upgraded house in order to propose to your intended and actually have a wedding. All right. <laughs> We're doing great. We're doing great. We're making it work. All right, the 23rd is coming up. We are coming in on the end of summer. It's going great. So, in order to propose to your intended, we love that it's raining. I will gift on the twenty on the twenty fourth instead. Every rain day saves a total of like anywhere between eight to ten seconds, depending on how fast or slowly I have to gift today because I did not gift yesterday. You do your watering. We will take all of the time save we can.
There we go. Fabulous. So, in order to propose to your intended, you need to reach certain thresholds. Firstly, you need 10 hearts. That is the maximum amount of affection you can get with any of the villagers. Uh, so you need 10 hearts uh, to propose to somebody. You also need the upgraded home because you need your your fiance to live somewhere. <laughs> you need your your future spouse to be able to live with you after you get married. So that is why you need the upgraded house. You also need... Um, oh my goodness, please. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate it. <laughs> you also need to gift uh, the marriage pendant, which actually relies on the first two prerequisites. You can't buy the marriage pendant unless you have 10 hearts and have already upgraded your home. So in order to propose, you need to have all of those things already. It's great. <laughs> it makes the routing a good time. And we are watering. Today is just a harvest day, so I will harvest our goodies. Water away. It looks like I have a good amount of wood. I've been making decent headway with the wood requirements. I want a minimum of 450 by the end of the uh, by the end of the summer. Uh, right. It always rains on the 26th. Do we get the elusive raining also on the 27th? We do. Amazing. Incredible. <laughs> There's like a one in three chance of that happening. <laughs> and I got it while I was recording, which is good fun. I actually don't need to fill that up anymore. <laughs> this is my last harvest. Once I pull these guys out of the ground, I don't need them anymore, so I'm just going to leave them there. I'm also going to put this guy back in. I don't need him anymore. And that is the end of summer. We made it to the end of summer. The hardest part is over. <laughs> I'm grabbing tiller because when I sell um, when I sell my crops, I get a 10% extra income bonus. And now I sleep all the way through to the fourth. Okay, that's an overnight cutscene. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, overnight cutscenes are rare events that have a small chance of happening uh, throughout any given night. I'm going to take this time to chop down trees. I'm also going to take this time to warn any of the viewers. I'm going to warn my audience that a flash warning is coming up. Uh, I'm going to be checking the mail. Um, and as I check the mail, this is the only time this happens is when I check the mail, uh, the screen will flash very aggressively because I check the mail very quickly. So if you are photosensitive, if you have, uh, seizures that are triggered by flashing lights, um, please take care of yourself. Um, I will warn you as I approach the mail, um, so you can take care, but yes, this is your flashing lights warning. I'm going to check the mail right now, so look away. I will let you know when we are good to go. All right, here we go. I'm actually gonna delete these first. Okay, for real this time. Here we go. And we are safe. It's, it's very aggressive flashing. All right, so. The goal right now, I do have the minimum number of wood required. I need 450 wood in order to upgrade my home. Everything else will go towards the, um, oh, that was a hefty flash of lightning. Everything else will go towards building the bridge, which you will see shortly. All right. Let's see, what else have I got around here? Hmm. I'll pick up this hazelnut. Okay. I want to head into town around 8.30. 
because that way I can run into Shane before he goes to work. I'm going to skip this cutscene. Uh, Shane should be around here about now, actually. He should be over here, so we should see him soon. There he is! See? Hi, Shane! I have a gift for you. Hello. Hi. This is for you. How did I know it was your favorite? It was just a lucky guess. And I'm going to wait for Piers to open. <laughs> uh, once Piers opens, I'm going to sell almost all of my crops. I'm going to sell these pizzas that Shane has very graciously gifted me in the mail. Um, and I'm going to sell all but three of these pepper pop, these uh, hot peppers. And then one of the pepper poppers. I am a little short on money. Just a wee bit short. I'm also going to buy the bouquet. Hmm. I have uh, the $10,000 required in order to upgrade my home. But I do need a little bit more money for the $5,000 necessary for the, um, oh, hang on, did I, I did check. Okay. Sometimes there are, there are quests in the mail that you can get that will fulfill as you go through. <sighs> well, we will upgrade the house. Fabulous. Thank you, Robin. And we'll go from there. We will make it work. Let's see. There aren't a whole lot of forageable items either. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. We can figure this out. We can absolutely figure this out. We do have a little bit of time. In the meantime, I'm going to go to sleep. Chopping down some trees as I try to navigate, walking through this absolute forest. I'll chop down some extra trees. This is animation canceling, by the way. Uh, it, it's very heavily dependent on timing. So, um, <laughs> sometimes I will animation cancel too quickly, which is an interesting problem to have. I am just going to toss some of this stuff. The pine cone, the sap, the stone. Uh, yes. I'll just throw those in there. And I will sleep. Not a whole lot of money. This is fine. Fifth day of fall is another day in which I gift Shane. Um, I'm going to be gifting him the bouquet. Uh, because right now he is locked in at eight hearts. Uh, actually... I think I know something else that I can do just to make sure that I get the required amount of money. More on the fly routing, as you can see. Let me see. forageables do we have? Not a whole lot. Alright, let me see. He should be locked in at 8 hearts, correct? Yes, he is. So, because he has reached 8 hearts, it means that his his uh, heart levels will not decay now that he is at 8 hearts. Which is helpful. It's incredibly helpful because I need money. Aha! Fantastic. Okay. Forageable items are your best friend. This is why we use this particular farm, the forest farm, because the forageable items that will spawn here on this side, super helpful. Incredibly helpful. The chanterelles especially sell for a good amount of money. So I think because of this excellent forage, we should be good to go. I am not, however, going to count my chickens before they hatch. So we shall see. I am going to check the mail again. So again, this is a flash warning for anybody who may be photosensitive. This will be a lot briefer. It will not be as aggressive, but it will, it will be shorter. Um, but still, this is a flash warning just in case. 
Uh, so I can get the extra money. Fabulous. I just got the five, um, the 15K. So I only got 500 in the mail today. I can still catch shame. I can still catch him. We can do this. We can do this. <laughs> it will be a-okay. Everything will be a-okay. Beautiful. That is just enough. That is actually just enough money. <laughs> Incredible. So I'm going to go gift Shane this bouquet. So now we can go steady. And he just walked into... Oh dear. He just walked into, into work. Hi, Shane. I know you don't really know. We're not going to eat the hot pepper. We're going to gift it to you. So now I'm, I'm short. Uh, 10 friendship points, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm a little bit short, but it's fine. We're gonna make it work, and we're also going to hope for rain. <laughs> this is the tail end of the run, where we hope desperately for rain, uh, and for gifting items. If all goes well, then I will get rain very early on in the week. If not, then, oh boy, <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> But for now, I'm just going to chop down some extra trees. Oh my. Alright, 200. That should be good. Let's go to sleep. I'm gonna sleep until 2... Well, <laughs> this is the thing about the rain RNG. I optimally, optimally, in the best of cases, <laughs> I would have been able to run out, propose to Shane as it was raining. But there is no such luck for me. <laughs> because, of course, the house upgrade hadn't finished yet. I'm going to sleep until Wednesday, actually, and we'll see how it goes from there. Um... Uh, my goodness. Just my luck. So I wouldn't have been able to propose even if I had all of the requirements. Even if I had the required uh, heart levels. Because of course, this is just an example of how brutal the, uh, random, uh, the RNG for Stardew Valley can be. Uh, rain is randomly generated. Again, there is an 18.4 18, 18 chance. Uh, of it raining any given day in Stardew Valley in the fall. So it is just hoping, hoping that it rains right when you want it to or need it to. So it goes. <laughs> but we take it in stride. I'm gonna again go down and I'm gonna meet Shane at around 7.10 gift him one of his favorite peppers. That's him. I heard the door open. There he goes. Excuse me, sir. Sir. I have something for you. Hi. This is for you. <laughs> there we go. I have all of the wood necessary. I need to go up and <laughs> get that last 500 necessary. And hope for rain. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna see if it rains on either Thursday or Friday. If it doesn't rain on Friday, I'm gonna go and gift him. It's not raining on Friday. Okay. We'll go. I'm gonna go up, check my mail. For the last time this run, again, flash warning, please take care of yourself if you are photosensitive. I will let you know when we are good to go. This has been your flash warning. Fabulous. We are all good. I have the 5,000 gold. I have the 300 wood. 
And now I'm gonna go and say hi to Shane and hopefully, 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 <laughs> we will get the, uh, <laughs> the, the 10 hearts necessary. Another good thing about reaching 10 hearts before it rains is that he locks uh, any of them, all of the marriage candidates will lock at 10 hearts. So again, you don't have to worry about decay like it was at eight hearts before you gift the bouquet. Um, so once he hits uh, the 10 hearts, we can just sleep. <laughs> we can just sleep and hope for a rain day. Come on out, big guy. This is, this is the last pepper. There we go! We just hit 10 hearts. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Why couldn't it be raining? <laughs> the the uh, best friend's achievement shows up every time you hit 10 hearts with a, with a any NPC. That's why it's called best friends. So now we're just gonna hope for rain. Let's just hope for rain. There we go! And now it's raining! <laughs> So I'm gonna eat one of these pepper poppers. This is why I keep the pepper poppers and I don't sell them. The pepper poppers give you a speed boost. <laughs> um, another reason why we wait for rain is because Shane deviates from his regular weekend schedule, which is why I'm going out on a Sunday. Uh, just even though it's the weekend, Shane will still come out at his regular scheduled time to go to work. So everything is working out beautifully. Everything is going as planned. <laughs> relatively speaking so this is the bridge that's going to need repair i'm gonna skip willie goodbye willie thank you for your time i appreciate it uh don't need this bamboo pole though i'm gonna get rid of these egg <laughs> these uh pine cones speed boost so this bridge coming up here is the bridge that needs repairs this is why we need 300 pieces of wood another unskippable cutscene i can't even move off we go. Hello, old mariner. May I please have a marriage pendant? Thank you, sir. Fabulous. And this is it. This is the tail end of the run. I'm gonna go gift this to Shane. He's going to be very excited. He says that he will take care of everything. Um, and the wedding will be in three, three days. So we head home and we sleep for three days and then we get married. It's marvelous. It's incredibly romantic, clearly. <laughs> Here we go. Marry me, good sir. I'll set everything up. We'll have the ceremony in three days. And now I'm just going to go and sleep in a house that isn't even mine for three days. <laughs> but yeah, this is it. This is the run. Uh, that is Stardew Valley Marriage Percent with all of its RNG glory. <laughs> I do really hope that you will consider this for Flame Fatales 2022. It's my favorite run. I recently got a PB. I, I love this run so very much. Um, and I really hope to showcase it at Flame Fatales. So this is our final cutscene. Time will be when our two characters kiss and the little heart shows up over their heads. So I'm just going to run through this. <laughs> We're going to run right through this dialogue and I will call time. And time. <laughs> Hooray! We did it! Yay! Thank you all again so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Let's see if I can get them to kiss. Let's see if Shane will kiss me. run that was adorable 